Hey everybody, I've got a lot of stuff today. Um, so today we're going to make bifold wallet, um, but I figured we'd do something a little different. Um, bifold wallets, we usually do card holders like this, or they'll be taller and they'll have like the vertical pockets. You don't ever, you don't often see um, bifolds where the cards are laid out sort of like this. Um, the card's held vertically, but it's a long pocket. So I have a pattern, and this pattern is going to be available in the description if you want to make one. And we're going to make one up. They're fairly simple. They're basically just, um, they're like card wallets, but you got a billfold on the back. And for leather, I got kind of a bunch of stuff from the scrap in here. We got some cool camo and um, like a pebbled green that matches nicely. And so we're going to cut out this pattern and get into making. We'll give you some tips along the way. So when you print this out, um, print it out on like a heavy cardstock. We ran out, so I'm using computer paper, just regular computer paper. It's a real pain. It's just not strong enough. You gotta be really careful. And um, so when you print out patterns, heavy computer paper, or you can print them out on regular computer paper, and then you can transfer them to like a pattern plastic if you wanna make a more permanent pattern but I would not suggest using regular computer paper because your lines are gonna be kind of shaky. We'll fix it, it's fine, but yeah. So if you're gonna be skiving on this design, and you don't have to, um, all you're really gonna to need to skive is the bottom of the two T pockets, and then I'm gonna skive around the corners of our exterior shell. We're using a very thin leather, um, to line this with that's gonna match this, just this natural color. Um, but I like skiving around the outside because it gives it gives a little bit of dimension that adds just an, another, um, another little detail when the wallet's done. So we're just gonna go down and just skive slow and steady. Now we're gonna glue in our liner, and if you you don't have to do this step, the one thing is um, I like to I always like to sew across the top of my wallets, um, even if I'm not lining them. And the reason being that if you don't sew across the top, as you open and close your wallet over the years, if you're hand sewing veg tan leather or a really nice leather, these things are gonna last a decade. And as you're opening and closing the wallet over and over and over again the stitching adds a lot of strength to help keep its shape. So if you don't stitch it, it'll probably be fine, but it will, wallets will tend to sort of get disformed at this joint here. They'll stretch out a little bit more. So I always like to sew across the top as well. When you're lining, you usually have to sew because you're sewing two pieces of leather together. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna put my shell down on my lining material, which is just another veg tan. It's like an ounce thick, barely. And I'm gonna just trace around with a pencil and we're not going to cut this out. This is just to show me roughly where I need to glue. I'll probably glue like a, a half inch over on all sides. And so we're going to glue both of these pieces. We'll stick them together as always. We'll put them between the blocks and then we'll start assembling the interior of our wallet while this glue sets up under the blocks. All right, so if you're using contact cement like we are, um, you glue both sides and then you wait for the glue to get almost completely dry to the touch. You'll have a little bit of tack if it's, it's really humid here today, so that tack is never really gonna go away if it's humid. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick one side to the other, but you don't wanna just go directly down because you can get like air pockets in the middle and then you can try to push them out with your bone folder, but it's, it's, not, it's not a fun time. So I'm gonna start on one end. There's dog hair. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start at one end and I'm gonna stick it down and then I'm gonna just work my way over and kind of hold this up as I go. And what I'm doing is instead of pushing air out this way or this way, I'm making sure that everything is flat as it sticks because you don't want to be pulling, when you have this much surface area glued, it's not like a seam where you can kind of pull it up. You're pretty much sticking it where it's gonna stay forever. So I'm just gonna slowly work my way all the way down. And remember to keep that held up until you make your way down with your hand to flatten it. And that'll make sure that we have no lumps, no air pockets, no nothing. And then if you're not skiving, you probably don't need to do this step, but what I like to do, because once we put it under our granite blocks, 
The granite blocks are flat, so they're going to sit, but they're not going to flatten the skived edge. It's going to be below the surface that the blocks are contacting. So I'm going to go through with my bone folder and just very gently press that angled seam. And that'll get that nice and stuck down. And now I'm just going to do a rough trim. I don't usually do the finished trim until everything is dried and pressed. And I'm going to put this under here to dry. So while that's drying, we're going to assemble our interior um, as much as we can. Now the cool thing about this pattern is that what you can do, if you don't need the billfold, you can assemble the interior as just a card wallet. Um, you can keep these little curves, or you can just cut this straight across. You can assemble everything and then just glue it right to an exterior shell without the billfold, and you have like a nice six pocket card wallet. Um, we're going to make the billfold version. So the first thing we're going to do, well, we've the first thing we've already done, um, I've gone through and I've burnished the tops of all the curved pockets, and I've put my stamp in to one of the card pockets as well. And we're going to use, in the pattern, we always put a pocket guide. And that is used to mark on our back pocket where we're going to glue the other two pockets. It's used to mark the position of the pockets. So I'm just going to go through with my scratch all and I'm going to mark right where I want these pockets to land. And that'll tell us where to glue up to and where the top of our T pocket is going to meet. And then once that's glued down, of course, we can just glue this in. We don't need to mark the location because we already have our, our marking there. So once we have the T pocket sewn in, um, we need to just glue in our large bottom pocket. And the large bottom pocket with the pattern piece has a trim allowance uh, because depending on the thickness of the leather, you're going to need a little bit more, a little bit less. So this way you can just glue this in and then flip it over, trim everything nice and flush. What I like to do is once I have my pockets cut out, I cut off the trim allowance. Then I can use this piece, which is roughly the size of the pocket we're actually going to end up with after we trim everything. I flip over my pocket and I put this on the back and all I'm doing is I'm just going to use my scratch all to make a couple little marks. And the reason I'm doing this is this is going to show me roughly where I need to glue. So we don't need to glue all the way to the edge because this is going to be trimmed off, but we do know that we're going to need glue on the other side of this mark because this is going to definitely be in the wallet. And I like to glue a little bit past this line. And that just basically guarantees that you're not going to be sticking down this pocket and find out that you glued the edge, but you didn't glue enough into the center to actually catch the body of the wallet. And so this is how our interior is going to lay out. And you can see I've marked um, for our next step. So burnish the top of this flat part if you want to, or paint the edges or dye them, or now's the time for that. And then I've marked where these pockets are going to land. So the next step is going to be to just glue the pocket assemblies to the interior shell.
All right, so we have our outside shell glued up, trimmed up, ready to go, and our inside um, assembly, all the pockets are glued in, stitch where they need to stitch. So we need to stitch across the top of both of these because once we glue these together, we're not gonna be able to stitch across the top. Um, now, a couple notes before that. If you wanna just make a card holder, or card wallet without the billfold, now would be the time, all you have to do, you have this assembly, glue it to whatever you want your exterior leather to be, sew around the outside, and you're done. You have a six card, uh, card wallet. The other thing is, um, one of the nice things about this design is when you put the cards, um, I forgot what we were calling it, uh, vertical with a horizontal, if you flip it the right, whatever. If you put them like this, um, this is a great way to size bifolds for larger currencies. So we're in the US and a US bill is fairly short by comparison to a lot of other international bills. So this is a good way, instead of, if you put your cards like this, like a traditional bifold, um, you put, you can either make them really big to fill out the space or you just have like a really tall and really wide wallet. Um, by doing your cards this way, it allows you to keep the, the wallet sort of slim this way so that when you fold it, it still fits in a pocket nice. So that's one of the benefits of doing the cards this way. Um, so we're gonna go through, we're gonna just punch the top of both of these, get them stitched up, and then we'll assemble the wallet all together after that. We have the tops to both of our sides stitched up and we just sanded them. Now I'm gonna edge them and burnish them because the next step after this is to put our wallet together for the last time. So with this closed, you can get a burnish on the top parts, but it's much easier if you do it before you assemble everything and then just kind of touch up the corners. So I'm just gonna use a size zero edge beveler from Weaver. Um, there are a bunch of different sizes. I like to use the, the size zero because it doesn't take off a lot. And then I'll go in with, um, with a piece of sandpaper and just kind of sculpt that edge a little bit more instead of relying on the edge beveler to do, to remove most of the material. And that's personal preference. Um, it, if you're doing, if you're working with thicker pieces, of course you can step up to different sizes. That's, that's what they're designed for. But for us, um, we generally do, for wallets and finer work like this, we generally stick to the size zeros and then just do everything else with a uh, light grit sandpaper, maybe a 220 or a 400. So our last step is to glue um, the interior of the wallet to the exterior of the wallet. Now, a lot of people will write to us and say they, they have trouble punching through so many layers. And I totally understand that. I don't punch through all the layers. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch each side individually first, and then we're gonna glue them together. Now, the easiest way to do this with this piece specifically, both of these, the interior and the exterior are the same length. So if we use our calipers and it's set to the same distance, as long as we start punching at this intersection, and we're using um, an evenly spaced stitching prong, obviously. If we go right down the line, these are gonna line up fairly well. It's only gonna get complicated when we get to this side. So I'm gonna punch these, and then I'll show you how we're gonna line the bottoms up because we have to deal with the, uh, the pocket overlaps. We don't wanna split a seam or anything like that. So for the bottom, the first thing I'm gonna punch is the interior, because like I said before, we want to make sure that we're not gonna be punching holes in between any of the pockets and splitting seams. So what that means is that we're gonna go through first and do these two seams. Now once we've done that, what I'm gonna do is, 
you have to remember that you have a back and a front to each. So if you were to say, have this, um, you know, you're punching from the back side or something, the holes aren't gonna line up because then you're gonna be gluing the opposite way. It gets a little tricky. So you wanna make sure that you have the outsides facing out when you're punching. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up the seam that's gonna be glued together. We're gonna basically butterfly that out. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of transfer over my stitch holes. So I started about here and I'm just gonna make that mark. And now I can just, I don't even need to worry about lining this up, like moving this over because I know I just went one, two, three, everything was evenly stitched. So now once I go through and punch these holes, I know that they're gonna line up when I glue everything together to stitch. And then you just do that again. So we'll make, we'll even out this side, we'll do this. And then because it's a bifold and we're gonna have a little extra on our shell so that it can close, you just basically fill that in. That's all you have to do because you don't have anything to line up on this side. And so now that we have all of our holes punched, we're going to flip the pieces over because when they stick together, that's how they're gonna go. I'm going to mark one side first, and I'm just gonna mark at the stitch hole. I'm gonna mark before the last stitch hole that these are gonna be joined together because remember, when we put this bifold together, we're gonna have this piece detached or else the bifold won't close. And then all I'm gonna do is glue this up and glue this up, stick them together, and so. And here we go, here's the finished piece. Not bad for a scrap bin wallet. Um, so yeah, so the pattern is really nice. Like I said, it um, it's a little bit taller, but it's a little bit shorter. So the overall dimensions are similar to a bifold where the card slots are horizontal. But if you're doing it for someone who has currency that's a bit taller than your currency in your country, this type of pattern might help you out keeping it compact. And um, I actually, really like this interior layout. The first wallet I ever made, the card slots were oriented like this because you never really have a card fall out of a card slot in a wallet like this, but if it ever does when the wallet's closed, it can't go anywhere. It falls into the center. It's just a little bit of added security should that ever happen. Um, and so you have six card slots, nice big bill slot. It's a fairly simple bifold, but feels like it has some substance. Um, yeah, that's about it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.